Legend. That's an interesting word. Great players make great coaches, period. You could be the best X and O guy in the world. If you don't have the players, forget about it. And great players need coaches that understand the mission. Chuck Kyle is the man whose story will be told for decades to come. Legends are born out of sustained success. Under Chuck Kyle's leadership, the Wildcats created a legacy that is unparalleled among Division I high schools in Ohio. Of course, nothing is guaranteed in sports. And for all the Ignatius football teams under Chico's tutelage, their stories, regardless of the results, shared a common thread. They all had a belief in each other and a commitment to be the best they could be. Getting over the euphoria, that's okay. Take a, take a few weeks, okay? It was a long season, way longer than what we usually experienced. The kids had an unbelievable experience to of winning one, and I'm, I, there's a desire to go again. There's a desire to get back at it. But in full realization, we weren't going to sneak up on anybody anymore. Right? Uh, people knew who we were. And uh, probably adding to the expectations and the maybe pressure, if you want to say, uh, Dave Crowder from uh, USA Today called and uh, I mean, we talked about our, who's coming back and what, what's going on, and he called back a week later and said, well, you're going to be ranked number one in the nation going into the season. It, it's very easy for uh, coaches to go, ah, oh, I don't know if we're that good, you know, something like that. But if you're, going to, if you're going to do that, if you're going to achieve that, you have to say yes, go ahead. For me, the biggest thing was that as we kept doing this, the expectations grew. And it was like one thing to win a state championship and maybe win a second one. But then all of a sudden it became expected that we were supposed to win this thing every year. And that's kind of a tough thing. And that's another thing that Chico had to address with us, that we had to just wipe that thought out of our heads and realize, look, we're just playing football here. So forget about the expectations and just play football. But that to me was one of the greatest things that I had to deal with personally, that these expectations were such that we were just gonna go out there and win every game all the time. And it, what we were doing was really kind of amazing. But because of Chico's leadership, we were able to succeed. When I came to Ignatius, you, you learned on the first day that you had to pay the price if you wanted to win, and if you wanted to be a part of this tradition. And that's something that I, that I always have carried with me, and that's something that I plan to, to coach uh, when I'm the head coach. So I think that association with success, but there's a reason why we were so successful. And obviously Coach Kyle was, was a huge reason, and, and really the rest of his staff, and he's always appreciated his staff. He's always given them a lot of freedom. But Coach Kyle, he's been the leader. I came in in the 90s, in 98, so we, we had one, uh, I guess seven championships and a, a runner-up and a couple state semifinals. So I, I just associated it with success. Well, you knew that there was an expectation of success when you decided to play football at St. Ignatius, but that's what you signed up for. When you're in grade school and you're watching St. Ignatius play in front of 25, 30,000 people in the playoffs, and you want to be a part of that. After lunch, second, third grade, you dream about being Scott Meach and you dream about being Dave Ragone. And so when you actually get the opportunity, it's just such a great feeling and you just want to take advantage of it. You know that with that comes expectations. Expectations that you're going to put in the work, do things the right way so that you can succeed. So that's certainly a part of it, living up to the expectations, but they're expectations that the community doesn't just have for you. They're expectations that you have for yourself. My son, Ben, who was the quarterback in, in 96, 7, and 8, he was interviewed and 
he was quoted as saying, you know, the state championship doesn't go through Massillon anymore, it goes through St. Ignatius. I understood that, that, you know, we're an inner city school, but we needed to become more like them. We needed to become more like Ignatius. And, and I'm not saying that we could be the equal of them in, in terms of analysis and discipline and, and level of execution, but I knew that if we became more like them, our fortunes against them would be better. Pre-game warm-ups, and, and at, at that time, you know, we were maybe a little bit like a lot of inner city schools where, you know, there's a lot of hype and a lot of, you know, all this noise going on, you know, wasted energy in pre-game warm-up, and at the other end of the field, you didn't even know that they were out there because they were quietly going about their business of getting ready to play great football. From the bus ride to on-field and pre-game, we took it as a business trip. Like, we understood that we were in a position that if we were locked in and focused, that we would, we would take care of business the right way. And our coaching staff, so Chuck Kyle, obviously, um, being the legend that he is, surrounded himself with unbelievable coaches. And those coaches held us accountable. And then the seniors held the juniors accountable. Juniors held the sophomores accountable. That was the culture that was created. We know we have to pick up the intensity on the offensive side of the ball. The defense has been doing a great job all year, and it's up to us to put the points on the board. And when we saw the upperclassmen doing that on a daily basis at every game, then the following year, the following game, those guys would do the same thing. And we, we continued that tradition of just staying laser focused, bus ride there, pregame warm up, locker room before the game, pregame speech, and then it was time to, to take care of work. I think a lot was learned. Um, you know, first from those 88, 88 and 89, I mean, those, those guys, they, they had a belief before we knew what states felt like and looked like in football, and they had a belief and they made it happen. And, and it was one day at a time. You know, you put in the work, you do it the right way. You know, you show up to games, you're ready to play. You know, you show up to practices and prepare the right way. You know, so all of that kind of fed into, um, you know, a momentum that I think started and, you know, kind of kept and continued through the 90s to where it just became this, it kind of fed itself. That charisma, that potential, that attitude carried itself through the early part of the 90s and, you know, I was fortunate and my brother and others were fortunate to be a part of that, kind of the front end of the of the ride, if you will. I always loved, obviously, the Ed's Ignatius rivalry. That was always great. I mean, we had a lot of local ones here, um, you know, Fortunately, we played a lot of extra football in those days, so you know, we developed a few more, you know, seeing Xavier in, in the playoffs or Moeller, or, you know, so it was always great to see two big programs like that kind of clash. One that stands out probably the most is my sophomore year getting a chance to play at the Rubber Bowl against Maslin. That was pretty impressive and intense for a, you know, call, called a sophomore to kind of go, wow, this is what, what football's like only a, an hour south. and. And it, there was, you know, when you, when you go from a regular season game into the playoffs in Ohio, and not many people around the country even realize that, you know, how many people we bring to a, to a football game in, in the playoffs. And Ohio's pretty special, uh, not just Ignatius, but Ohio's pretty special for that. But I'll tell you what, those are, those are memories that, that, you know, you can't replace.